Well, thank you, and uh, welcome to those of you here in the room, and uh, welcome to the many thousands uh, online watching the live stream. I think we have more than 10,000 people, so that's super exciting. So uh, I've been with the company for about three weeks now. So by Automation Anywhere standards, that makes me an expert. Um, but uh, it's awesome to be here at a time where we're going to make the biggest product announcement. So for a CMO, I could not have timed this any better. And um, we are here at the NASDAQ, the beautiful and historical building that was created in 1971. And it was the first electronic stock market. And that forever changed the course of history for the financial, financial services industry. So it's no coincidence that we decided to have our biggest product announcement here as well, because we believe that with the innovation packed in the product, we're going to change the course of history for the industry uh, for automation. So the way we're going to do this is it's going to be a combination of show and tell, but hopefully more show than tell. And you're going to hear from our experts, industry thought leaders, customers, partners, so you get the full spectrum of point of views to be able to understand how this transformation is going to impact the industry and put automation in the hands of everyone, not just a few experts. In fact, many of you will have a chance to build your first bot in minutes. You'll be able to do so uh, in just a few uh, minutes across uh, the hall here. And after that, we'll be able to continue to discuss and mingle with each other. And the experts will be standing here with demonstrations on each side. So you have the full opportunity to experience the product as we built it. So I'm not going to take more time. And I'm super excited. By the way, before I do that, for those of you who are uh, tweeting, make sure to use the hashtag 82019. Uh, it's live right now. Like I said, there's about 10,000 people super excited about it. And so make sure to use that. But like I said, I am super, super excited to get us started here and welcome our first speaker, founder and CEO, Mihir Shukla. You probably think that I'm still pissing the fools when all that I'm not losing sleep in. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon um, in this uh, very iconic building in a, uh, one of the world's very iconic cities to help us launch a product that we are convinced will become the industry's most iconic RPA platform. <clears throat> we call it Enterprise A2019. And we couldn't think of a more appropriate place to unveil it, uh, but here, uh, epicenter of global commerce. Robotic process automation has already transforming so many businesses of all sizes. Businesses are automating processes that they couldn't automate before. RPA is fulfilling a promise that was made many years ago by legacy technology companies. These companies tried to convince us that they will automate everything. But the reality is that today, a vast amount of business processes are still manual. Thousands of employees, they act like bridges between applications, work like robots. They are, they are performing a set of processes that could not be automated before. About 15 years ago, Automation Anywhere embarked on this journey to pioneer robotic process automation category. And by offering customers software robots, the software robots are capable of automating virtually anything that should be automated. And today, we're very fortunate to have about 3,500 customers in 120 countries, thanks to all of you. Now, as broad and as wide the RPA adoption is, there are still challenges. There are, there are friction points along the way that prevents everybody from, ex ex from discovering the true potential of the technology. As a result, what you see is you often see customers with few bots here and few bots there, but they fail to do a full digital transformation. 
if we cannot remove this friction points, if we cannot make it any more easier to develop, deploy, and manage bots, if we cannot find a shorter time to value, I'm afraid that for, few, for many customers, the promise of RPA will remain shallow. What are the kind of challenges customers are facing? And on any customer who is on an RPA journey, these are some of the questions and friction points they must overcome. The first one is, do I have to burden my IT staff to install and update a software? Would I need a trained resource on RPA to scale my platform? Would, I, would a business user be able to build a bot or would I need more expensive and hard to find developers? How would I educate the rest of the organization? Because apart from the team that is involved in bot, with the, with the RPA, the entire nature of work changes. Humans and bots are working side by side. So you need to get the entire organization culture be familiar with the era of the bots. These are just few of the challenges in front of us. Now, many of you have struggled with this, this friction points. And despite the friction points, you have been amazingly successful. So think about it. If we can remove all of these frictions, imagine what you could do. Imagine if we reimagine the entire RPA platform in the automation landscape, what are the things you would be capable of doing? As technologies evolve, uh, you reach an inflection point, at which point you, in order to go any further, you must move away from old systems, old way of thinking. You must move forward. You must stop doing what everybody else is doing. And you should do that so that you can make a huge leap forward. A2019 is such a huge leap forward. We are doing things that, that are different than what anybody else is doing. And it is important that you can't fight legacy with legacy. This is one of the other reasons why you must take a huge leap forward. So I'm very excited, very pleased to introduce to you our newest, completely redesigned, uh, completely reimagined version of Automations Anywhere Next Digital Workforce Platform. Frankly, it is automation made brilliant. And because of A2019, anything else going forward would be a legacy. One of the things A2019 has is it is a purely web-based. It means you can enable and provision users and machines as many as you want almost instantly. Think about it. If you have five users, 50 users, 5,000 users, or 50,000 users who wants to participate on this robotic journey, they all can be provisioned almost instantly. Now, as easy as uh, Automation Anywhere platform is to use, we knew we could significantly improve the overall user experience. We could make it better dramatically better. As a result, the A2019 is not just easier to use than ever, but it is refreshingly simple. It has a consumer-like intuitiveness in creating and managing bots that is unmatched. Since Enterprise A2019 is, is web-based, it can be accessed from any browser, from any operating system, from any device, including mobile devices. This means the RPA is not limited just to the cubicles. It is now also available to the mobile workforce. And it can also run on IoT devices. So it is now available to everywhere. That is the next generation RPA. Consider this. If you receive two links in your mail, one that says install a software, and other one that says here is the web URL. Which one are you more likely to click? Web URL, right? Because it's the easiest. The adoption rate of a web-based system is many times more because it is easier. 
let's take a look what this completely reimagined RPA experience feels like. Imagine anything simpler, anything more intuitive. Now, one of the other friction point we focused on A2019 has to do with training and onboarding multiple profiles of users that are involved in RPA journey. One of the things automation, the A2019 offers is this remarkable capability to self-learn and learn as you go, where it, it is helping you build a bot as you start the process, any kind of automation. Simply and intuitively, it figures out, uh, it anticipates what you are trying to build and suggests you ways to get it done quicker and faster. The other compelling capability it has is this ability to completely give you a completely different user experience based on your profile. So if you are a developer, IT, or a business user, you could get a completely different experience from the same system that is tailored exclusively for your profile and you can customize. But the goal is that everybody participating in an RPA journey in this digital transformation has the best experience from their point of view. With A2019, the friction point of training and onboarding different kinds of users is a yesterday's challenge. This is RPA reimagined. The next challenge that I want to talk about it is one of the bigger challenges, but it is so elusive that many people find it hard to describe it. It has to do with the front office or the customer care center automation and the back office automation. This is an area where we have always thought of world as two separate things, front office and back office. And it was right for the, ma for the manual world we live in today. Is it really that different in an automation world? Or is it just a different interaction points for a bot? So what A2019 does is it has reimagined a completely different human bot interaction capability. And with that, you can interact with a bot when and where you choose it. By doing so, you are combining front and back office together. You are combining human and bots together, working side by side and breaking the silos that exist in a manual world. If you are in a front office, you would interact with a bot more often through a chat-like interface, as if you are talking to an assistant. If you are in a back office, you will interact less or none at all. But it is just a matter of where the process is running. So we are reimagining things to bring this new, uh, inf uh, new paradigm together. One of the advantage you have as a customer is when you do that, your operating model is more closer to a digital native companies because that is the right mindset to think about. This also offers an unprecedented capability, not just to have a human bot interaction, but human bot collaboration. So think how work will get done. 
a human will do certain steps, then a bot will do next steps, then another human will do few steps, and a bot will do few steps. It is a completely different collaborative environment between human and bots working side by side. With A2019, the gap between front and back office is narrowing down. And this is, again, an example of RPA completely reimagined. Re now, keep in mind, all of this capability, entire web-based interface, mobile, all of this, does not mean it is on a public cloud. All of this is available on-premise, just as you have it today. Especially if you are in a regulatory industries, you need that capability. So all of this available on premise today, it's just a lot more frictionless now. But this leaves us to have one last friction point that exists in this category. That has to do with uh, when you start on one of these journey, you have to provision machines. You need people to manage update software. And when you look at the labor cost associated with it, it adds additional complexity to it. So very delighted to introduce you to the fact that A2019 has this amazing deployment option if, where you, it is, allows you to deploy your entire bot infrastructure on a RPA as a service. This is Automation Anywhere's Intelligent Cloud, our own cloud, public cloud where you can install and run bots within a few minutes. All it takes is you log in and get started right away. Right? It has a sense of an instant on capability that is unmatched. Now, A2019 is only is, is a true cloud native platform. What do I mean by it? You will hear that everybody is doing something on cloud, but there are many cloud wannabes. Uh, what they do is the legacy companies take a legacy product and host it on a cloud. But that is not same as cloud because you have all the friction points still remains. You still have to download a software time to time. Right? So it just feels like cloud. It is not. A2019 is different. It is designed to be a cloud native. And as a result, the A2019 scales in a way that only a true cloud native platform can scale. In all of this, you have a choice. You have a choice to, to run this entire platform in a frictionless way on-premise, or you can use Automation Anywhere's cloud and get started in a few minutes, or a hybrid option where you use it on-premise and use the public cloud to dynamically add the capability as you scale. It is completely your choice. Now, whichever deployment you choose, um, the, 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 the extensibility and scale of A2019 is unparalleled. Let's take a look how easily A2019 scales.
as you can see, it is very easy to scale. Thank you. From any device, from any machine, uh, whether it is 5 watts, 500, 5,000 IoT devices, entire infrastructure interconnected, and you can, you can scale with a click of a button. Now, I'm going to bring all of the things that we talked about together to show you a live product demonstration. So that, uh, and for that, I would like to invite Abhijit, our SVP of products, upon the stage. And what we're going to do is he's going to use the live product uh, to build a bot in four minutes or less. This is live, so give him a big round of applause. <laughs> and, and, to make it, and to make it a little more interesting, while he's building it, it's Friday afternoon, so I'm going to call an Uber on my phone and see if he can finish building a bot <laughs> before oh Uber arrives. How is that for a, for a fun <laughs> after Friday afternoon? Are you ready for it? All right, we're here. The yes. race is on. All right. So uh, let's and do something fun phone. that uh, involves all of you guys. Uh, earlier on, we had collected your names, and and uh, you know what we'll do is I'll actually create a product launch bot live right in front of you that will send each of you an email welcoming you uh, to the A2019 launch. Right. So right off the bat, I have an advantage. I don't need to install any studio. I simply Login, it's a, automation is a URL and a click away. Uh, as you can see, you can automate in any language that you want. So uh, product is fully localized already. If you want to learn, then we have walkthroughs that is our in-product learning. So you can go to, through these different learning tracks based on your role. But let's focus on building our bot here. So I quickly just go to my bots. I can, again, uh, look at any of these folders, and let's create our bot. We'll call it the A2019 launch bot. And instantly, you land into the bot development workbench. Right? So let's make some room here. By the way, this UI is you know, completely web-based, uh, looks gorgeous, and it's responsive. So it works on a PC, a Mac, uh, Linux or a tablet or a mobile device, right? We have this new visual bot building uh, uh, flow view, and we also have a list view. I'm actually going to see the bot being built in both the views, so you can compare what the developer view versus the business uh, user view looks like. So uh, to be able to uh, automate what I just talked about, we will have to access the Excel spreadsheet so just uh, access the Excel spreadsheet. That's the first step. The next step is to be able to look at all of the email IDs that are in that Excel spreadsheet. So we'll quickly go through that. Again, business user vocabulary. So I simply have to say for each row in the worksheet, do the following, right? So now I have to simply loop through all the email IDs that are here. And then for each of these, I simply need to send an email. So drag and drop. I'm sending it to each of the email IDs in that spreadsheet. And the subject is welcome to A2019. And the message is A2019 launch. I was there. So you can, you can save this email. <laughs> And that's it. So you save the bot, and we'll run the bot. This is the bot that just ran live in the cloud it's right fantastic. in front of you. And you should have received an email. So raise your hands or phones if you have received the emails. Great. Awesome. All right.
So there you go. How how, uh, how far is the that Uber guy? That was three minute twenty seconds, and Uber is a block away. I I I, I was explaining product features. <laughs> if I really built the bot, then it would have been sure, two minutes. Sure. I should probably <laughs> cancel Uber. I'm not ready to go yet. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, one of the other big pillars of A twenty nineteen is his intelligence and how intelligence is spread out across every part of A twenty nineteen. We do not think that AI is the separate thing. AI is embedded into every single step, and everything is intelligent. Why shouldn't it be? And would love to have Abhijit explain us uh, the intelligence pillar of A twenty nineteen. All right. Thanks, Thank you. Let me start by talking about an area where AI is most commonly used, that of the, the, the problem of understanding data. You know, because all work in a company begins with uses and ends with data. In fact, decisions depend on analyzing data, actions are taken based on data, and these actions result in generating even more data. Now, this data has many forms. It may be in spreadsheets, in ERP or CRM systems, emails, paper contracts, scans, and even data on the screen. And so anytime one talks about automation, reading and understanding data in all its forms becomes key. So as RPA continues to, uh, to automate any other part of the process faster, any path that handles data must also be automated. Now, Documents such as invoices and purchase orders and insurance claims and loan applications and patient forms and all, these are common examples of this raw data, right? And this data is unorganized, it is unstructured, and, but it impacts everyone across all different departments uh, in most companies, in most industry. Um, understanding and acting upon this data or these documents is a complex problem, but one that RPA can AI, uh, uh, and AI can solve very well. It is ideally suited for that. In fact, enterprises have hundreds of people today just focused on manually looking through documents, checking this data against systems and policies, and then entering and updating data to move the process forward. This makes the overall process slow and error prone and results in long and unpredictable cycle times. So solving this comp uh, problem comprehensively is hard. And it requires AI that is completely integrated with your RPA. And I can easily learn from this data, understand it, and extract meaning. So this, in turn, allows the process to be automated end to end. And without shifting into manual whenever an email or document shows up and needs to be read or understood. Now, we were the first RPA vendor to recognize the potential of AI for intelligent process and document automation. And we started investing in AI to understand raw data more than five years ago. So thus, IQBot, the first cognitive solution in this space, was born. Our goal with IQBot is that it reads and understands every business document so, uh, so humans don't have to. IQBot combines or brings together a whole range of AI technologies. These are all driven by our customer use cases. Now, our customers have to comprehend documents of varying quality, varying formats in different languages, sometimes handwritten, having you know embedded pictures and so on, often unstructured, and containing industry-specific jargon. For example, uh, and uh, they want to extract only the right amount of data here, uh, they want to always extract it with you know, accuracy and predictability and in a form that it, uh, that it can drive the rest of the automation. For example, for insurance, this means that they want to extract claims-related data to uh, drive the entire claim settlement process. For financial services, they want to extract mortgage data to drive their loan approvals. All of this can be accomplished by IQBot including learning from humans so that the bots become smarter over a period of time. That's the promise of AI truly delivered. IQBot today is in its sixth generation and is one of the fastest growing AI solution in the world. <clears throat> now, we, we just talked at length about what IQBot uh, brings to the table. 
But AI is not just about understanding documents. AI is also needed to understand applications, to make sense of what a person actually intends to do when carrying out their daily work. AI, our AI sense uses AI to understand user interfaces similar to a way that a human would, just like a human would. And it is a core part of our platform. AI Sense is in now daily active use across the world. And finally, it is not just our AI that customers need. They need AI skills that are relevant to their domain. And they want to integrate uh, these AI skills into their business processes and, and RPA systems. So what can be more simpler than integrating these AI skills than just with a simple drag or drop? So we have today a large ecosystem of AI vendors that we work with. And with A2019, we've made it really easy to create new AI skills and deploy them on our platform. This makes the use of AI straightforward for business by allowing them to combine best of breed technologies to solve critical business problems. You can even embed your own custom AI algorithms in languages like Python. It is truly revolutionary and makes AI usage mainstream for your business. So we talked about various aspects of AI in 2019. Let me actually illustrate how all these capabilities can come together in a real life use case, that of insurance claims validation. The problem here is that if someone sends a claim, then how do you ensure that it's for the right amount and that it's not fraudulent? You will see how our IQBot AI skill can be combined with various other AI skills to automate this business process end to end. So the bot here starts by using the IQBot AI skill to extract information from a handwritten claim. Now notice that adding this IQBot AI skill is as simple as drag and drop. Now IQBot will find the right data and it will uh, extract that data. What we've done in A2019 is to add any third party AI component is just as easy because of our plugin architecture. Any, you can add any third party AI component and it shows up in our automation command library. So here you'll see various AI components from natural language processing to auto ML based prediction to computer vision and so on. Now using these, we have built AI skills on top of these to actually uh, uh, to estimate the cost to repair a damage that has been caused to a car and to detect claims fraud. So the damage estimate AI skill is actually trained on photos of damaged cars and it uses the Azure computer vision uh, AI and given a picture of a damaged car, it will estimate the cost to repair that damage. The fraudulent claim detection AI skill is trained using fraudulent automobile claims and it is based on the uh, data robot AI authoring platform. So given a claim, this AI skill will determine whether this claim is fraudulent or not. So these AI skills combined together create a very powerful intelligent claims validation bot that uses the each AI model output to decide whether a human should check the claim, uh, claim amount and or fraud and even who to escalate the claim to. It actually results in an end-to-end -end automated business process with the right supervision from humans and puts the right checks and balances in place to ensure regulatory compliance. So uh, I, I hope that I have given you an idea of how easy it is to mix our own IQBot AI skills with any third-party AI skills to solve your automation problems end-to-end. -end. The question is, are you ready to build your intelligent digital enterprise for tomorrow? We believe that with A2019, you are. Thank you. I think one of the things Craig laid out, thank you so much, Craig, for that insight. 
this vision that every person will have a digital worker assistant is is likely to happen a lot sooner than we think for example in our bot store today there are pre-made digital workers assistant about 100 of them that you can download immediately so that's happening in real time one of uh, just to bring all of that together is what we've seen so far what is the value of building a bot in a time less than an uber takes or what is the value of combining AI skills in a drag and drop way. The value is that anybody can do it. It is to democratize this capability so that everybody, the way we, we learn to use Excel and uh, Microsoft Office, everybody could learn to build a bot. Now, let me take a next step forward on ecosystem. Um, today, an ecosystem has a very important role to play. Today, Automation Anywhere has one of the largest ecosystems around uh, all the automation tools and technologies. This includes all the large software vendors, Microsoft, SAP, Oracle, IBM, ServiceNow, and many others. But in addition to it, it includes many other tools, process tools, AI technologies, uh, analytics technologies, and many others. There are other 50 other logos that we couldn't fit on this slide. But the objective is to create an open system so that automation can work through in a bi-directional way between any system. We have bots that integrate 68 systems. There are bots that integrate 500 systems together. Right? So the open ecosystem is foundational to all software today. But as we were thinking about this, we, were, we said is for, to reimagine RPA, is this a gold standard or is this a table stakes? And frankly, we think it's a table stakes. If we have to reimagine an ecosystem, what would it look like? So I have a very special company and a special guest who will help us understand what a reimagined ecosystem will look like. Um, it's from Microsoft, and it is my pleasure to invite Ed on Ed Fendry on stage. Ed, thank you. See ya. Thank you. Appreciate it. I love that Uber demo. I was concerned it cost five dollars <laughs> to cancel and do that demo. So uh, thanks so much. I'm Ed Fandry. I run our financial services uh, team uh, at the company. So essentially, we we look after all of our banking customers, our insurance customers, and our capital market customers as well. And well, thanks so much for the invite. Today. Thank you for coming. Yeah, happy to. Um, so just to level set everybody, maybe we'll uh, uh, we'll let everybody know what our partnership includes, and then we'll uh, we'll take it from there. So early, earlier this year, uh, we signed in a partnership agreement with Microsoft. We've been working with them for over a year. And this is a comprehensive partnership that covers Azure to begin with. Uh, our RPA as a service platform is hosted on Azure. Uh, uh, Azure's AI capability, are, we, we, have a, we, we work together on AI uh, collaboration. Okay. You saw a demo from Abhijit on how we use Azure there. It includes Office 365, Power BI, Power Platform, App Dyna the, 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 the Microsoft Dynamics, and many, many other tools. So it's a broad, comprehensive partnership. Um, and maybe you could share with us why is this partnership important to you and in, in, in the place where you are sitting? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think about that in the simplest forms when I think about even the, the financial services industry, and this replicates the industry, other industries as well. It's really kind of three three parts. The first is data. The next is kind of um, the ability to um, to uh, look at that data and get accuracy, regulations, et cetera. And then it's speed. And and what's exciting about this for me is that that's essentially what you've been what you've been showing today. That's that's what really RPA is all about. Added on top of that, the power of cognitive services and AI. It really takes things to the next level. Um, one of the things we have talked about is the evolution of the ecosystem. Where does it go beyond open ecosystem and being able to talk to each other? Uh, what does that future look like? Well, look, it's it's interesting because I I, I think a lot about. I loved your your um your, your speech because I I do think that that we're just really at the beginning of this. If I think about the biggest questions I get when I speak to our largest customers, it's about. Um, you know, the ability to, to transform and what transformation means. And a lot of times people think of transformation as this giant leap, right? It's a jump to the next step. Uh, it's a deployment to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. 
Uh, but the reality is, I think, you know, what, what you showed today and kind of where, where we're headed, it's really about the baby steps. It's really about um, how can everyone become uh, a, a developer, essentially. And you showed some things today from the business side of the point of view. And that's really what, where the excitement and the enablement comes from. Um, how about we talk about a little bit about contextual automation? Mm. Share us your vision of contextual and then, then we'll show it. Yeah, you and I spoke a, yeah. a, a bit about this earlier. You know, it's interesting in the collaboration market. I started Microsoft uh, just about 20 years ago. And uh, during that time, uh, collaboration was essentially email. And the big collaboration product was the ability to do instant email, later known as kind of instant messaging. And kind of where the industry got it a little bit off was that to collaborate, you actually had to minimize what you were in, working in, and then you know, load or you know, maximize on the screen, in that, in that case, the instant messaging. It basically broke modes, it broke context. And I think the same thing for, for automation, if, if this ability to be adopted, you have to really work within the flow of, 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 of you know, what, what a user's doing, right? And, and, what, and what you wanna create. What's super interesting about the contextual side of collaboration, I think we're going to see a video in a bit about it, is that you know you could even if you're if you're living in Excel, so to speak, you could actually go to the ribbon and just go go to it and automate tab, and without minimizing, maximizing, finding where where the application is, you can just uh, create a bot right in what in, in what you're working with, and that is not only powerful, but working in that context allows it to stay in that flow and it's very usable. That's right. How about we show it to them? This is something Microsoft and Automation Anywhere have been working together to see the future of open ecosystem and automation as we see. integrations with virtually every Office 365 product and many other. Here is an example of an Excel. So this is an Excel attachment. You opened it just like any other, ex uh, any other Excel file. You would go in the automate menu item and right there it is entire automation anywhere available within Excel. You never left Excel. And here it is extremely powerful. It has all the bots built in capable of operating in your context, as you said, right? without ever minimizing an application. And you have the power of bot right there. The automation anywhere that you saw earlier is available here. You just ran a bot and you got the work done without ever leaving Excel. The same exists across all, virtually all of my Office 365 and other Microsoft products. We believe that this is the future of ecosystem. The, typically, you will see an ecosystem where there is a company slide. May let me finish. There you go. Typically, you will see an ecosystem where. Uh, thank you. <laughs> typically, wherever you see ecosystem slide, there is a company logo in between surrounded by many other logos. That's how everybody got one. I think the future of automation and the contextual automation is that in the center is you, customers, users, your world, your processes, everything about you and everything else is around it. And that is the example of what a future of ecosystem looks like where you are not going to the automation or RPA, RPA is coming to you in your world. Um, Ed, uh, there are quite a few customers here and they had few questions. Uh, so uh, one of them, uh, there are a few large customers here who yeah. would like to migrate their bots to cloud platform, preferably Azure. Um, what should they do next? Well, we, we talked about this as part of this partnership. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You know, there's not a tremendous amount of complexity uh, in doing this, but obviously you need someone to kind of reach out and, and to talk to as well. I'm based here, our financial services practice is based here in New York, about two blocks away. Um, so I, I mean, I, I, it's pretty simple, but I just wanted to put, yeah. put my uh, address uh, on, on the slide here so you don't have to navigate the 140,000 employees uh, at, at, at Microsoft. 
and just kind of say, hey, like this is something that that we want to do, and we want to we want to migrate to the cloud. The reality is that the the end of this, you know, because even for our customers that have used on premise Office, and then they go to the Office in the cloud, and the users come in and say, well, did it install or not? And that's exactly the goal of it. It should be seamless, but all the functionality that you're receiving and the power of the cloud on the back end uh, will just kind of you know work within the fabric of your day. So it's as simple as just kind of you know reaching out to me, or if you have a, a local uh, Microsoft representative, certainly. I reached out to them as well, and we'll be happy to kind of uh, onboard you onto the cloud. It's fantastic. I loved it when you said, just put my email address up there. I said, <laughs> I, I was tempted to put mine. I, I didn't quite go that far. <laughs> right. Uh, thank yes. you. The, uh, that's fantastic. The, um, we have partners here as well, and we share so many partners together. What should they do? Yeah, honestly, it's the same. The way that if you think about where cloud's going and where the ecosystem is, our customers and our partners are really together as one. So there, we don't have a separate team that that you know handles the case if it's a partner or a separate team that's customer. You could send them all all, all our way, and we're happy to help out. It's fantastic. Let's give him a big round of applause Thank for you. making time. Yep. Thank you Thanks. so much. I yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. So it is my pleasure to um, introduce. Uh, we, 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 what we're trying to do is hear this from multiple perspectives, from a Craig's perspective, partner perspective. Um, we uh, would love to hear it from a customer perspective. So it's my pleasure to invite uh, Shefali Shah, uh, who is uh, leads JP Morgan Chase RPA uh, program. And thank you for coming. Um, one of the amazing things, who doesn't know what JP Morgan and Chase, but uh, amazing thing about them is they, they have been very early on on this journey. And one of the most cutting edge deployment of intelligent automation and um, take us forward. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mihir. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, what an amazing show and uh, tell uh, that uh, AA team uh, put together for us here as the customers. Um, we've been on this journey with Automation Anywhere since 2015. I was introduced to this tool as the operations executive to improve my day-to-day -day operations and I was one of the first adopter at JP Morgan of this platform. I, I gave a hand at trying building a bot, but we realized very quickly it was the operating model and the structure that Gary talked about was very critical to get it right up front. Therefore, we have a center of excellence team who supports all of our IT you know, deployment of this platform, governs our bots and also builds and deploys our bots to our entire operations uh, through the JP Morgan Chase. I've seen through this journey of last four years of deploying this bot and after I took on my current role as a head of the intelligent automation in 2017, and not just be the adopter, but now the, you know, the, the you know, person who kind of now deploys this bot, provides the best practices, measures the, you know, the return on our investment with automation anywhere. And we have, we're facing some of the frictions that Mihir and team talked about and then they addressed. What I must say is the partnership that we've had with the Automation Anywhere product development team and my COE team is an ongoing discussion and they have always listened to us as to how can we improve and scale our intelligent automation transformation and digitization. Therefore, I'm super excited to see the, the enhancements you have made to this platform and how we can leverage it. The key components that I'm looking forward to leverage is for and foremost, the web capability. It will completely enhance how my our COE team would now build and deploy bots and not longer spend time on the software download and management and upgrades and such. So that will really scale up that team, you know, and their time to market of the bots getting deployed to our operation. The other big component for us is the simplicity of building the bots. Our use cases are getting complex as we have been on this four year journey. So we're looking for more intelligent automation and integrated and a simpler way to build our bots in a multiple dimensions that our end to end process requires now. And the couple of the, some of the areas that we've been successful to date in deploying the, you know, this solution is mainly early on in our basic task bots. The orchestration bot of downloading data, inputting data, integrating data between multiple systems. Uh, in examples like reconciliation, account setup, transaction processing, and some of you know, those type of functions that we all have in our companies. 
But what we're looking forward to enhance with this simplicity and integration of the IQ bot and some of the AI component is to enhance those you know, uh, complex use cases further. So that will be a big win for us as we you know, look at some of the proof of concept we're doing with IQ bot this year. And finally, the other big area for is the cloud. And a cloud, not a public cloud, where JP Morgan Chase, we would never put stuff out on a public cloud from a regulatory perspective. So having this tool being run on our private cloud is a key for us, which will significantly reduce our infrastructure costs because today we not only have a server for every bot, we also have a backup server given the complexity and the necessity of our, our work that gets on, gets done. So we're looking to host our, you know, the control room of automation anywhere in our private cloud in a due course. But beyond that, it's the journey that we will continue to partner with automation anywhere, and we look forward, you know, to this ongoing partnership. Um, I also, you know, encourage all of you to, you know, see how this, you know, would in, in, help you in your organization, and wish you all also the best in uh, on this journey. So thank you, Mihir, again for this opportunity and this partnership. That was under. Please welcome Chief Revenue Officer and co founder at Automation Anywhere, Ankur Katari. At Automation Anywhere, we like to fall in love with problems and not solutions. We believe that if you fall in love with the right problem, the solution takes care of itself. And this is the business problem we have fallen in love with. What would it take to accelerate the journey of every company to become a digital enterprise? Now, you heard Mihir and Abhijit talk about how we have removed friction from your product experience. What I'm going to talk about is how A2019 allows you to eliminate debates and remove friction from your programs and thereby allows you to accelerate your journey to become a digital enterprise. Now let's start with your start phase. When you start, there are different, different challenges you end up facing in your programs. Simple questions, but they slow you down. Who should create these bots? Do you require IT and developers or can really a business user create a bot? What processes should you automate? And where do these bots run? Well, with A2019, we want to take all these debates off the table. Gone are those days when an enterprise software was just designed for IT. That's very 1990s. Modern day enterprise technology works for every user, be it business, IT, or developer. It works for every size company, for large enterprises like JP Morgan, and for mid and small enterprises, it truly works for anyone. It allows you to automate any process, be it in your front office or your back office, whether your data is structured, semi-structured, or unstructured, or whichever industry you belong to, or whatever department you work for from HR, finance, supply chain, logistics, it should allow you to automate any process. And that's what A2019 allows you to do. And lastly, as our name goes, should allow you to run these bots anywhere, on-prem, on in cloud, on your server, on your desktop, from your mobile, on, from your tablet, on your VM, in any part of the world, in the language of your choice. And when you combine these three values, it gives you flexibility when you start. It allows you to go deep, wherein you can take one department or few process and automate it end to end and drive a large ROI. Or it allows you to go broad across the organization where you can truly democratize automation and put it in hands of every user, making everyone automate simple to medium processes, thereby driving productivity. But the real value is you start putting the DNA of automation in your organization as you start your journey. You start making your organization think automation. This essentially allows you to reduce or shrink your start phase from three to six months to one to four months. As you scale from 
from your start phase to hundreds and thousands of bots, you, you encounter different challenges. And, the, and A2019 allows you to remove these friction points as well. Ability to find and retain skilled workers. It becomes a big challenge when you have hundreds of bots. But with our easy to use and easy to skill product, which truly anyone can use, you can overcome this challenge. Can you truly drive adoption across the enterprise? There are companies which have offices in like 50 countries. Can you truly drive adoption across board? Can you truly drive change management across? You can with our web-based architecture and intuitive user experience. But as Mihir said, our contextual automation that we are putting, we are embedding in your way of work. You don't have to change the way you work to improve the way you work. With our attended automation tool, you can use these bots the way you want. And you can truly drive these adoption on a click. And you can really drive change management. You can improve change management through talks and motivational talks and PPT, but nothing replaces letting everyone experience the product that drives that change, putting it in hands of everyone, making everyone work with these bots on a daily basis. Nothing works like that. That truly allows you to drive change management. And as you scale, risk management becomes an important problem, which is actually embedded in this platform from the start. Doesn't matter where you use this platform, on whatever device, in whichever OS, the enterprise class security, governance, and management is inbuilt with every bot. And lastly, the total cost of ownership. This becomes a very important topic once you reach thousands of bots. And the frictions that we talk about this whole afternoon, as you start removing this friction, you drive this TCO down by reducing the cost to create, deploy, and maintain these bots at scale. Every RPA journey starts with this idea of productivity. And there's nothing wrong about it. But as you accelerate your journey, as you start scaling, you realize that the conversation in your organization changes from productivity to progress because that's what a technology-led transformation is all about. It's not just about productivity, it's about progress. It's about progressing your team, it's about progressing your company, it's about progressing your industry, it's about progressing your customers. This is an amazing opportunity, but for me, this is the second best price. If you ask any leader who has been on this journey, they'll tell you that the most satisfying aspect of this journey is it's allowing them to make work human. When you automate every process that can be automated, you essentially start using computers or what computers were designed for. Computers were designed to be used to process things and not to be used just as system of records. When you automate every process that can be automated, you start using machines what machines were designed for. So it allows us to be and to do what we are good at. Using our empathy, using our creativity, working together to solve complex problems. Ask any business who has been on this transformation journey, any business leader, they'll tell you that this is the most satisfying aspect of this journey. The problem of automation has always been the problem of time. And why I say that? In the last 15 years, we have not seen a single business leader or met any leader who says, I don't want to automate. Still, why? Eight out of 10 processes never got automated. Because it never made business sense. Because it took too long. There was never a business case. In other words, it was not economically viable to automate those processes, and hence we did them manually. Using Automation Anywhere's digital workforce platform, we have changed that. 
we have not only made it technically feasible to automate every process that can be automated, but we have also made it economically viable to automate every process in any part of the world. In other words, using automation anywhere, it's cheaper to automate any process in any part of the world than do it manually. Well, with A2019, by making your product and your program frictionless, we are further shrinking that timeline from two years to one year, and thereby allowing every company to accelerate their journey to become a digital enterprise. Thank you very, very much for joining us in this product launch of A2019. I encourage each and every one of you to go to our website, experience our product for yourself, form your own opinions, and please give us your feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ankur. So, as I said earlier, I joined the company a few weeks ago, and I was really excited when I joined because I really wanted to build a bot, right? So it sounds cool to tell your kids and your wife, you can build a bot. And so first few days, I got super excited, started to read and learn and talk to the product teams. And each step I made forward, I was getting more excited until I learned that with A2019, anybody can build a bot, and it just takes minutes. So I was really disappointed when I learned that, but obviously super excited uh, to be here announcing the product. So for those of you online, uh, this concludes the part of the program that uh, we had for you. You can join us and continue the conversation um, on social media. And for those of you in the room, we have a few things for you. Uh, first of all, uh, on each one of these screens, we're going to have demo stations with experts, so you'll be able to ask your questions, interact with them. Uh, we'll have a demo station here for experience. Here's going to be around uh, cloud, and here is, is going to be around uh, intelligent uh, automation. So you'll be able to obviously interact with them and, and kind of change stations. Uh, we also have build the bot stations, the part that I was super excited about when I joined the company. Uh, it's across uh, the hall here, so you have to exit from here, go around, and there's a room here that holds about 30, 35 people. So We'll probably hold two sessions. Not everybody's going to be able to get in. Uh, I apologize in advance. But for those of you who are obviously interested and want to do that, you'll have that opportunity uh, right after this. And uh, you'll have another opportunity uh, roughly 45 minutes after, because it takes some time to uh, uh, you know, explain um, how to do that. But uh, the actual work itself, we're going to be building more sophisticated bots than what you saw here. So it'll take a little bit more than four minutes. And then uh, after that, we'll be opening uh, this wall here, and we'll have an opportunity to continue the conversations with, with all of us here and mingle with your peers. Uh, we'll have cocktails, and I believe if the weather is still OK, we'll open the terrace, and you'll be able to, uh, again, spend the rest of the evening for, uh, with us. And then on your way out, don't forget to pick up the book and a gift uh, for all of you. So with that, I want to, again, thank you all for coming here with us. And uh, let's just go build those bots. Thank you.